One morning in the year 1957, the neurosurgeon Wilder Penfield saw himself like this. A weird freak with huge hands, huge mouth, and, and a tiny bottom. Um, actually, this creature is the result of the Penfield research. He named it homunculus. Basically, the homunculus is the visualization of a human being where each part of the body is proportional to the surface it takes in the brain. So, of course, homunculus is definitely not a freak. Uh, it's you, it's me, uh, it's our invisible reality. This visualization could explain, for example, why newborn or smokers put instinctively their fingers in the mouth. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't explain why so many designers remain mainly interested in designing chairs. So, anyway. <laughs> Even if I do not understand science entirely, for my design, I essentially refer to it. I'm fascinated by its ability to deeply investigate the human being, its way of working, its way of feeling. And it really helps me to understand how we see, how we hear, how we breathe, how our brain can inform or mislead us. Um, it's a great tool for me to, to understand what could be our real needs. Um, marketing people have never been able to do that. Uh, marketing reduces things, marketing simplifies, marketing creates user groups, um, and scientists admit complexity, admit fluctuation and, and uniqueness. What could be our real needs? Maybe the silence. In our daily life, we are continuously disturbed by aggressive sounds. And you know, all those kind of sound puts us in a kind of stressful state and prevent us from being quiet and, and focused. So I wanted to create a kind of sound filter um, able to preserve ourselves from noise pollution. But I didn't want it uh, to, to make it by isolating people without any earmuffs or, or those kind of things or neither with including complex technology. I just wanted to, using the, the complexity and the technology of the brain, of the human brain. So, I, I, I work with the white noise. DB is basically, DB is the name of the product, is basically a white noise diffuser. This is the white noise. Uh, the white noise is the sum of all frequencies that are audible but human being brought to the same intensity. And this noise is like a like that. And this noise is, is the most neutral, it's a perfect sound for our ears and our brain. So when you hear this sound, you feel like a kind of shelter um, preserved from noise pollution. And when you hear the white noise, your, your brain is immediately focused on it and will do not dis be disturbed anymore by the other aggressive sound. It seems to be magic, but it's just physiologic, huh? it's just in your brain and in mine, I hope. So in order to make this white noise a little bit active and reactive, I create a ball, a rolling ball, able to analyze and find where does the aggressive sound come from and roll at home or at work and um, towards the aggressive noise and emit the white noise in order to neutralize it. <laughs> it works. Do you feel the effect of the white noise? <laughs> it's, it's, it's too in silence. So, if you make some noise, you can feel the effect. So, um, even if this object, even if this product includes some technology, it includes some speakers, it includes some microphones and, and some electronic devices, this object is not a very smart object. And I don't want to make a very smart object. Um, I don't want to create a perfect object, like a perfect robot. I want to create objects like you and me, so definitely not perfect. So imagine, for instance, you're at home, uh, a loving dispute with your girl or boyfriend. You shout, you say, blah, 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 who is this guy? Blah, blah. And DB will probably 
roll toward you and turning around you with shh like that. So definitely not perfect. So you will probably shoot it uh, at this point. Anyway, in the same kind of approach, I design uh, K. K is a delight receiver transmitter. So this object is supposed to be displayed on your desk or on your piano, where you're supposed to spend most of your time in the day. And this object will be able to know exactly the quantity of light you received in the day and able to give you the quantity of light you need. This object is completely covered by fiber opticals, and the idea of those fiber opticals is to inform the object, for sure, but create the idea of an eye sensibility uh, of the object. I, I want, by this design, feel when you see it, you, you, you see instinctively this object seems to be very sensitive, very reactive, and this object knows better than you, and probably before you, what you really need. You have to know that the lack of daylight can provoke some um, problem of energy or problem of libido, so huge problem. No? Most of the projects I, I work on, I lead in collaboration with scientists. I, I'm just a designer, so I, I need them, so they can be some biologists, psychiatrists, mathematicians, and, and, and so on. And I submit them my intuitions, my hypothesis, my first ideas, and they react. They told me what is possible, what is impossible, and together we improve the original concept and we build the project to the end. And this kind of relationship between designer and, and scientist start when I was at school. Indeed, in my studies, I was guinea pig for pharmaceutical industry. Um, and the idea for me was, of course, I didn't do that to, for the sake of science progress. I just do that to, to make money. Anyway, I, this, this, this project uh, or this experience make me start a new project on, this, on the design of medicine. You have to know that Today, roughly one or two every drugs pill is not taken correctly. Um, so even if the active constituents in pharmaceuticals made constant progress in terms of chemistry, target of stability, uh, the behavior of the, of the patient go more and more unstable. So we took too many of them. We took irregular uh, dosage. Uh, we do not following instructions and, and, and so on. So, I want to, to create new kind of medicine in order to create new kind of relationship between the patient and the treatment. So I turn traditional pills into this. I'm going to give you some example. This one is an antibiotic, and its purpose is to help patients to go to the end of the treatment. And the concept is to create a kind of onion, a kind of structure in layers. So you start with the darkest one, and you are helped to visualize the duration of the treatment, and you're helped to visualize the decrease of the infection. So the first day, this is a big one, and you have to peel and eat one layer a day, and your antibody goes smaller and clearer, and you're waiting for recovery as you we're waiting for the Christmas day, and you follow your treatment uh, like, like that. To the end of the treatment, and here you can get the white core, and it means, right, you are in the recovery. Thank you. This one is a, is a third lung, a pharmaceutical device for long-term asthma treatment. I designed it to, to, to help kids uh, to following the treatment. So the idea of this one is to create a relationship between the patient and the treatment, but a relationship of dependency. But in this case, this is not the medication that is dependent on the patient. Um, this is the, 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 the kids will feel the ob therapeutic object need him. So the idea is all night long, the elastic skin of the third lung will slowly inflate itself, including air and molecules for sure. And when the kids wake up, he can see the object need him, and he takes it into his mouth and breaths the air it contains. So, by this way, the, the, the kid, to, to take care of himself, is to take care of his living object. And he do not feel anymore, it relies on asthma treatment, if it's the asthma treatment needs him. <laughs> In this case of 
of uh, living object approach, I like the idea of a kind of invisible design, um, as if the function of the object exists in a kind of invisible field uh, just around the objects themselves. We could talk about a kind of soul or a kind of uh, a ghost accompanying them, and almost a kind of poltergeist effect. So when a passive object like this one seems to be alive because it is starting to move. And I remember an exhibition design I made for uh, John Meda and uh, for the Fondation Cartier in Paris. And John Meda was supposed to show several graphic animation in this exhibition. And my idea for the exhibition design was to create a real pong game li like this one. And the idea was to create some self-moving benches in the main exhibition room. So the living benches would be exactly like the ball. And John was so excited by this idea. So he told me, okay, let's go. I remember the day of the opening, I was a little bit late, when I bring uh, the, the, the 10 living uh, and self-moving benches in the exhibition room, John was just beside me and was like that. Hmm. Hmm. And he told me after a long silence, I wonder, Mathieu, if people won't be more fascinated by your benches than by my videos. And uh, it would be a great honor, a great compliment for me uh, if he hadn't decided to take all them off uh, two hours before the opening. So, huge tragedy. Um, I guess you won't be surprised if I tell you that Pinocchio is one of my great influences. Uh, Pinocchio is probably one of my best design product, my favorite one, because it's a kind of object with a conscience able to, to be modified by its surrounding it, able to modify it as well. The other great influence is mine scannery. Um, in coal mines, um, the scannery was supposed to, to be close to the miners and was singing all day long. And when it stopped, it means it just died. So this scannery was a, a living alarm uh, and very efficient one and a very uh, natural technology in order to, 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 uh, to say to the miners, the air is too bad, you have to go out in emergency. Um, so it's, it's for me a, 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 great, uh, a great product. And I tried to design a kind of canary. Andrea is one. Andrea is a living air filter that uh, absorbs toxic gases from uh, air contaminated indoor air. So it uses some plants to do this job, selected for the gas filtering ability. You have to know, or you probably already know, that indoor air pollution is more toxic than outdoor one. So what I'm talking to you, the seat you are sit on are currently emitting some invisible and odorless toxic gas. Sorry for that. <laughs> uh, so you are currently breathing formaldehyde. This is the same for me with the carpet. Huh? Okay. Um, so, and this is exactly the same at home, because all the, the products we get constantly give away the volatile components uh, of which they're made of. So, let's have a look at your home. sofa, your plastic chair, your kids' toys, get their own invisible reality. And this one is very toxic. This is the reason why um, I created with David Edwards, a scientist of Harvard University, an object able to, to absorb the toxic uh, elements using those kind of plants. But the idea is to force the air to go in the effective part of the plants, because the roots of the plants are not very effective. Uh, Bill Volvetton from NASA uh, analyzed it carefully in the in, in, in 70s. So the idea is to create an object able to, to force the air and to be in contact at the right speed, at the right place, uh, in all the effective parts of the plants. So this is the, the, the final object. Uh, it will be launched uh, next September. This one is a kind of same approach because I include in, in product like Andrea some plants. And in this one, plants are used for the water filtration ability. And it includes some fishes as well. But here, unlike Andrea, here are supposed to be eaten. Indeed, this object is a domestic farm uh, for fishes and green. So 
the idea of this object is to be um, able to get at home uh, very local food. Uh, the locavores <laughs> used to get food taken in a radius of 100 miles. A local river is able to provide you uh, uh, food directly in your living room. So, the, the, the principle of this object is to create uh, an ecosystem um, called aquapony, and the aquapony is the dirty uh, water of the fish uh, by a water pump, feeds the plants above, and the plants will filter by the roots the dirty water of the fish, and after it goes back into the, into the fish tank. After that, you have two options, or you sit down in front of it like you would do in front of your TV set, amazing channel, um, or you start fishing and you make some sushis with, uh, with the fish and, and the aromatic plants uh, above because you can grow some potatoes, uh, no potatoes, but tomatoes, aromatic plants and, and, and so on. So now we can brace safely, now we can eat local food, now we can be treated by smart medicine, now we can be well balanced in our biorhythm with the daylight. But it was important to create a perfect place, so I tried to, uh, in order to work, uh, to work and create. So I designed for an American scientist based in Paris a very stimulative, uh, brain-stimulative office. I wanted to create a, a, a perfect place where you can work and play and where your body and your brain can work together. So in this office, you do not work anymore at your desk, like a politician. Your seat, your sleep, and your play on a big geodesic island made of leather. You can see like this one. In this office, you do not work and wrote and draw on a sheet of paper, but you draw directly on kind of huge whiteboard cave, like a prehistoric scientist. So you work like that. You can make some sport during your work. And in this office, you do not need to go out to, to, in order to be in contact with nature. You include directly the nature in the floor of the, of the office. You can see it there. So, this is an inspiration image to lead this project of the office. It really helped me to design it. I never show it to my client. It would be so afraid. <laughs> Just for my workshop. Um, I guess it may be the revenge of the guinea pig as was, I was. Um, but it may be the conviction, as monkey and homunculus we are, all of us need to be considered according to our real nature. Thank you very much. <laughs>